Hello and welcome to episode 65 of the Brain Manifesto, brought to you by the Ecclesian House. This is Pastor Bill, and over the next 10 minutes or so, we're going to talk about Palm Sunday. What exactly is Palm Sunday? Hosanna, Hosanna. All of my heart is crying, Hosanna, Hosanna. He's coming back soon, we need him more than ever. All of my heart is crying, Hosanna. He's raising up a standard, Hosanna, Hosanna. That's the first time we've ever had music on the Brian Manifesto podcast. Uh, that's If Camila Caballo's Havana Were a Christian Song by Becca Shea. No relation to this Shea. Uh, if you're interested, I'll put the link to the YouTube video for the song on the blog entry for this podcast over at EcclesianHouse.com. That's E-K-K-L-E-S-I-A-N-H-O-U-S-E. Dot com. Less than a week before the crucifixion, Jesus and the disciples headed to Jerusalem for Passover and came to Bethphage and Bethany near the Mount of Olives. Jesus sent two disciples ahead, telling them, Go ahead of us into the village. You will find a donkey tied there with a young colt on which no one has ever sat. Untie the colt and bring it to me. If anyone asks you, Why are you doing this? Say, the Lord needs it, and we'll send it right back here right away. So they went and found a donkey and colt outside in the street, tied by a door. They untied it, and some of those standing there said to them, What are you doing untying the colt? They answered him, just as Jesus had said. So they let them go. This took place so that what was spoken through the prophet might be fulfilled. Tell daughter Zion, See, your king is coming to you, gentle and mounted on a donkey's colt. They brought the colt, then they laid their clothes on it, and he sat on it. A very large crowd spread their clothes on the road, while others were cutting palm branches from the trees and spreading them on the road. The disciples began to praise God joyfully with a loud voice for all the miracles they'd been uh, seeing. They were crying out, Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord! Peace in heaven and glory in the highest heaven. Some of the Pharisees from the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. He answered, I tell you, if they were to keep silent, the stones would cry out. Then the crowds which were there, when he called Lazarus out of the tomb and raised him from the dead, who went ahead of Jesus and those who followed, began to shout, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in an uproar, saying, Who is this? The crowds were saying, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. Then the Pharisees said to one another, You see, you have accomplished nothing. Look, the world has gone after him. This word that the Bible records they were shouting that has become somewhat of a rallying cry uh, on Palm Sunday for churches around the world, Hosanna, uh, which loosely is, is O oh, save. It's, it's actually a Greek transliteration for what the crowd was actually yelling. It's two different Hebrew words. The first, yasha. It's to be open, wide, or free. To be safe. Um, uh, to be avenged, defended, delivered. Help, preserve, rescue. It's be safe. Uh, bring salvation, or having salvation. Uh, bringing salvation. Save or save your uh, getting victory. And then the other word, the second word, is na. And that one is uh, I beseech you or, or I'm begging or uh, I'm praying uh, for something to happen. The Hebrew phrase would be yasha na. And um, there's only one other place in the Bible where, where it's actually found that people are saying it. And even in the New Testament, they they use the uh, the Greek transliteration for it of Hosanna, but in Psalm 118, verse 25, it says, 
Lord, save us. Lord, please grant us prosperity. When added to the next verse, verse 26, He who comes in the name of the Lord is blessed. From the house of the Lord we bless you. This is what the people would say or shout or chant during the coronation of a new king of Israel. And there's, there's really a lot going on here in this passage of text in the scriptures. Um, new kings, they would ride into Jerusalem on the back of a donkey while the people were crying out, Yasha na. And they would cut palm branches to wave in the air or lay on the path. All of this sounds very familiar with the piece of scripture that we read, right? On top of all of that, there was a militant group in Jerusalem who had taken to carrying around palm branches through the street and yelling Yasha Na through the streets before Jesus had come. Before all of this hubbub about uh, is Jesus the Savior, is he not, before he started working miracles, they were already doing this. See, this group of people believed that the time of the Messiah was at hand, the Jewish Messiah. And they had made it their purpose to undermine the Romans at every turn to make it easier for the Messiah to kick the Romans out of Israel when he came and took power. It was because of this that the Romans even passed a law that uh, no palm branches were to be allowed within the city limits anymore. So you've got that going on. But really, the detail that is the most striking to me, and, and I know it's not by accident, I know this is by design, is that the day that Jesus rode into Jerusalem on the back of that donkey was the day that the sheep deemed acceptable to be sacrificed for Passover would be brought into the city. According to Exodus 12, each family was to take a sheep that day, the 10th of the month of Nisan, and live with it in their home. Now that day we celebrate as Palm Sunday, the day that Jesus rode into Jerusalem on the back of a donkey. Now, trying to fulfill that fulfill that law for, for the Jews, if their family was too small to eat a whole lamb for Passover, then they could share the lamb with a neighboring family, and the lamb would stay with them until the 14th of the month. And then it would be taken back to the temple to be sacrificed by the priests. Now, each of those days, from the day the lambs were supposed to be taken into someone's home, on through till the 13th, Jesus spent his days in the temple, his father's house, teaching and healing people. And at night, he would travel back to Bethany. And he would spend the evenings and the nights with the disciples and Mary and Martha and Lazarus and uh, Simon the, um, the leper and people that were the closest to him, his family. On the evening of the 13th, he had the Last Supper with the disciples in Jerusalem and then they traveled to the Garden of Gethsemane. I'm sure the disciples assumed they were on their way back to Bethany, but that night Jesus was arrested, and on the 14th, the very same day the lambs were supposed to be sacrificed for Passover, he was crucified at 3 p.m. in the afternoon. The same exact time that the sacrificing of the lambs was to begin in the temple. That's when Jesus died. And the veil in the temple that separated the sanctuary from the Holy of Holies was torn in two from the top down. Hosanna to our King Jesus, the King of kings and Lord of lords, the Alpha and Omega, he who is the beginning and the end, the one who was and is and is to come. Remember how loaded 
that word is and the story around it this time of year when you see and hear that word Hosanna. This is Pastor Bill saying, until next time.